live from the jungle for the first time in a long time. Welcome to uh, the the first ever SmackDown Lionheart podcast. It's, it's been a minute since we did SmackDown, but we will be doing it every week. So this is our first. This is a fresh start to SmackDown. Uh, this is the draft episode of the podcast. We're gonna talk about the draft. We're gonna talk about the matches. We're gonna talk about everything. So uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> now what can I say? Yeah, go ahead. What can I say, man? I mean. Hey, Son, uh, I think we can agree here, you know, <clears throat> I'll take SmackDown, and uh, you can go ahead and take your Raw. Yep. And, um, well, but, okay, we're going to do this a little different, this this episode of the Lionheart Podcast. We're going to talk about the matches first, then we're going to talk about the draft picks. We're going to reveal the draft picks and probably just give our thoughts on who, on, on you know, which roster, who got drafted to who, well, to what, and yada, yada, yada. But uh, let's talk about the matches first. Now, the first match of the show, we had John Cena versus Luke Gallows. Now, this match was like any other match we could have saw on Raw. Uh, Cena won the match. It was like a typical Cena taking over type match. He hit the, you know, five moves of doom. Luke Gallows tried to come back, but, you know, it didn't work. And Cena, he nails him. He nailed him with the AA, and that was pretty much it. Not, not None too much special. All right, now moving on to the next match, Rusev and The Miz versus Darren Young and Zack Ryder. Now, this match, it, it was, you know, the outcome kind of surprised me now. Uh, it, uh, you know, you, you guys may know him as Evac Engage. He was saying that uh, he, he thought Rusev and The Miz was going to, you know, destroy Darren Young and Zack Ryder. But it was the... Com- Is that, that again? Uh, he thought it was going to be a squash match. Uh, he thought it was going to be a squash match, pretty much. But, um... I, like surprisingly, the match ended with well, Darren Young. I guess you could say the gut wrench is now his signature now because you know he didn't pin him off the gut wrench. He submitted, um, what did he submit? He submitted one of them with the cross, the uh, the chicken wing. Yeah, Bob Backlund's uh, finisher. The, the, hump, the, the hump chicken. Yeah, he. Oh yeah, that man was humping him. That man had him in the chicken wing. He was. It was. It was weird. He was. Yeah, like he was. He was putting in some work there. It's kind of weird, but um, yeah. They, Darren Young and Zack Ryder won, and yeah, that was a pretty quick match. Like, the matches on this card wasn't, you know, it, it, it was the only good match on this card was just the main event. Like, the matches were just, they were okay, but the most interesting topic of the show was just the draft. But uh, that's why I'm really not, you know, getting too deep into detail about these matches because they wasn't really, you know, all of that, But um, in my opinion. But let's get to the, ma- uh, the next match, Xavier Woods versus Bray Wyatt. Uh, I'm going to let Dragon talk about this one. As your, you know, podcast GM of SmackDown, all I got to say was, man, this match was actually better than I thought it was. Uh, Xavier Woods, you know, he put up a good fight, but in the end, Bray Wyatt picked up that uh, victory. Uh, it, he ended it, you know, dominant. He hit uh, two, uh, like, uh, these centons of, on uh, Xavier. And, I, and we were laughing because like, <laughs> he was, like, slipping on a banana yep, peel. Yep, yep, I said, yeah. <laughs> During the shot, I said, uh, like, Bray Wyatt slipping on a banana peel. That, that was funny. That man went back for that they're senton like, slip. Boom. Senton. It like he, it looked like he was selling a clothesline. Just that, that air just hit him. Yeah. I, I don't know what that was. It was, it was funny, though. But, uh, but I yeah, think I at mean, the end, Woods tried to go for a uh, honor roll. Like, the little roll. he does a little roll-up then jumping clothesline. But then I think Wyatt caught him with uh, Sister Abigail. And that was it. That was it. Like he jumped up and Wyatt scared him with the spider leg. Like, you know that full spider thing he did, that reverse walk? Yeah. He scared John Cena like, with that on Monday. Oh, uh, yeah. As soon as he did that, uh, Xavier was just like, whoa, whoa, what? And that's when, you know, we saw the sister Abigail. Yep. Now, well, uh, well, let's move into the next match. Kane versus Kevin Owens. Now, this really wasn't a match at all, you know. For the past few weeks, we've been seeing Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, you know, Get into a fight and it happened again. We had Sami Zayn and Owens going at it. Like uh, Kevin Owens was walking down to the ring, I believe, and I think him and I think uh, Sami Zayn, yeah, Sami Zayn came out and they just got into a fight again. And as soon as they got in the ring, um, Kevin Owens he threw Sami Zayn to Kane and Kane was choking Sami Zayn. He was going to choke slam him, and then uh, you know he ended up grabbing Kevin Owens as well and he hit a double choke slam, and that was it. You know he, you know did his little typical pyro with the fire, boom, right hands up in the air, boom. And that was it. That, that that honestly was in the match. That was just a little. Yeah, it basically showing that they're ready for Sunday. Pro, you know? Yeah. But um, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, well, in the previous podcast, which was uploaded today, um, what is it, July nineteenth? Yeah, we uploaded that. To, uh, yeah, we uploaded that today. I mentioned that uh, you know, they may they might have a you know a really good match, and I'm still anticipated for that match. So uh, yeah, that's gonna be in our. Uh, we're gonna talk about that, and um. In our battleground results, 
podcast. But um, let's get into the next match. We have a handicap match: Sasha Banks versus Dana Brooke and Charlotte. I'm gonna let you get this one. Uh, uh, this match, like, uh, it was, it was kind of funny. Uh, it, it started off pretty much. It was you might as well say it was Sasha versus Dana the whole entire time until uh, Charlotte. Charlotte was just sitting there, and Charlotte saw that Dana was about to like, lose, and that's when Charlotte tags herself in at the last minute. Comes in and uh, Charlotte, I mean, like Sasha still thinks that Dana's a legal, you know, woman, and um, I mean, like uh, Charlotte comes up from behind and hit. Uh, what's that move called? The uh, uh, um, what is it called? Natural selection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the natural selection, and I mean that was it. I mean, it it was kind of botched because Sasha's head hit the ground before, uh, um. Uh, like her head hit the ground before Char- like Charlotte did. It was kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know how to describe that. That was just off. Yep. But uh, it, it, it was a good match. And uh, so uh, apparently uh, Sasha is gonna have like a mystery partner this Sunday uh, against uh, you know against both of them. So it, it, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna. It, so who knows? It might you know. Which wait, Sasha? She's she's on Raw, right? Yeah, yeah. Like okay, well we we might as well just go ahead and say it, look, guy, because I already just said it. Sasha. She she's drafted the Raw. Now now that she's you know drafted the Raw, I wonder who her partner is gonna be. You know, it might be you know. Did any? I wonder if any other divas got drafted the Raw. But we're, we're gonna get into that later during the podcast. But um, let's get into the next match: Chris Jericho versus Cesaro. Now this match was actually pretty yep. decent. This we, we we saw something we you know we probably ha- haven't seen in a while. We saw an OMG Codebreaker and. Man, that man. Okay, Cesaro tried going for that European uppercut off the uh, a springboard European uppercut, and as soon as he turned around for the elbow, cold breaker out of nowhere, and that was epic. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty good. That was a really that was a back and forth match. It was nice, right? You know, it was it, it was just great. It really was great. Yeah. I and knowing that, like, I think last time we saw that was uh. Was it WrestleMania? I don't think he hit it on AJ Styles. I, he, he, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, he was going for the phenomenal forearm. I'm pretty sure, and he caught yep. it there. Oh yep, 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 yep. And the next match: Natalia versus Alicia Fox. Now, this is one of, like this, you know, just like Kevin Owens and uh Kane. You know, this match really wasn't a match. We had a uh, we had a uh, big booty Beck Becky Lynch. She came out and her and Natalia got in a big ass fight. And referees tried to break him up, but you know. Like, this has been happening for the past few weeks as well. And, you know, same old, same old. They got in a big fight, and the, ref- the referee, the referees broke it up. And, um, yep. It really wasn't a match. <laughs> Just a big brawl, and then showing what they were going to do this Sunday. But now, since, you know, I'm the podcast GM of SmackDown, I'm going to go ahead and just go right into it. The main event. <clears throat> you know, we had a rematch from uh, our Raw. Of course, uh, we had a rematch from like Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Uh, man, this was like, like on Raw. It was a really good match, so I knew it was gonna be good tonight. But what, what happened tonight, guys? It shocked me. Dean Ambrose surpasses Seth Rollins and picks up that win on Seth. Rollins. Legit, no, no cheating. Nothing happened. He just le- like legitly just beat him off of dirty deeds. Uh, like uh, Seth Rollins went on top rope, went for a superplex. Uh, then uh, like uh. He hit the superplex, came over, like, over with the Falcon Arrow. Uh, I th- it was, isn't that called yep. the Falcon Arrow? Yeah, he came over with the Falcon Arrow. And uh, Dean Ambrose just countered out of nowhere right into a, a, a pretty, like, a ace on that. That, that, that probably was the, that that was the best dirty deeds I've ever seen him hit. Like, that man head bounced. Seth sold that. That man head bounced off the mat. It was crazy. I don't even know what to say. That man's neck just... I was like, oh. And, uh, I mean, pretty much, uh, that, that was it. Dean Ambrose won legitimately, uh, setting up a g- big momentum for him this Sunday. And, by the way, uh, just to spoil, uh, you know, the, you know what, what Seth and... Well, Dean got into... We're we, we going to get into that next, but I'm going to just go ahead and say it. Uh, Dean got dropped to the SmackDown, so he at the end, he was celebrating with Shane and Daniel Bryan, and that was the end of the show. But now, uh, the big part of the podcast. Now, let's talk about the draft picks. All right. All right, so guys, as we named the guy, you know, the picks for the draft, uh, Dragon is representing SmackDown, and I'm representing Raw. 
So I'm going to, you know, represent Raw, and, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, I'm going to name the guys, on the, the females or males on Raw, and we're going to talk about, uh, you know, give our thoughts on them being picked on uh, the, the, you know, the roster and all. But uh, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about Raw. Well, we're, I'm going to announce the names right quick. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> when Raw first, when SmackDown first came on, Stephanie chose Seth Rollins as the first pick. Now, this pick was too obvious. We wasn't even surprised when we saw this. This was beyond typical. <laughs> What you think, Dragon? Oh, that was beyond obvious right there. I mean, uh, Stephanie, yeah, I, I mean, I, it really, yeah, actually, say it didn't shock me. I predicted it. I mean, every, the whole world predicted it. I mean, <clears throat> if, if, if Raw was going to get the first pick and Stephanie is, you know, over Raw, of course, Seth's going to go first. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm, yeah, that, yeah. But then, uh, after, of course, after you know, it's on. You know, he put up that spoiler on my pick. Uh, my uh, first overall pick for SmackDown, of course, was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Dean mm-hmm. Ambrose. Uh, man, that man. Like, it, it was also one of those things of not being surprised. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean, it, it really wasn't that surprising. And all, all, the, all the shocking picks came after, you know, Dean. Mm-hmm. And, but uh, I mean, yep, yeah, yeah, that. I mean that was that was that was uh you know that was the pick for you know my guys, I uh, you know, me, WWE champion, world champion. Yep. And for uh, Raw, we, uh, Stephanie, her second pick was the women's champion Charlotte. Now I was really surpri- surprised she picked the champion like early on in the game. Well, early on in the you know the draft, I was surprised because usually uh. I mean, I, I didn't know how it was how it was gonna go this year, cause some I was thinking that the, uh, Charlotte might have gotten picked like at a later time during the show, but she was like the second pick for Raw, and that that surprised me. So that was pretty awesome seeing Charlotte get picked as you know the second, you know the second person in the draft. But you know Raw, they they did a smart move, cause I get I think she probably just wanted that women's championship. That's probably why Charlotte got picked. She wanted that women's uh, title, and that's what she got. She got Charlotte on Raw. But uh, of course, after Charlotte, uh, my eye pick, my next pick was AJ Styles. Uh, 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 you know, country boy, grown. You know, I think he has like two kids. I don't, I don't know. That's not the point. But uh, yeah, AJ Styles was the next pick. You know, I was shocked. I, I mean, Asa, I know you were pretty shocked too about. That. Oh yeah. I was like, wow, you know. I, I I was kind of you know I I wanted it to happen but I I didn't think it, you know it was gonna happen like that you know that easy but it did and we're never gonna see AJ Styles on you know SmackDown. yep so I mean what, uh, how you feel about that man knowing that we're gonna see AJ I mean I think it's pretty good because you know SmackDown SmackDown he could be one of SmackDown's top guys you know yeah. oh yeah guys guys I'm, I'm just gonna like you kind of like how you get that spoiler I'm just gonna give another right. spoiler Raw gets I, to me, I think Raw gets like the best, you know, out of, you know, yeah. I think Raw really gets the best out of all these picks tonight. Out of all the picks that happened tonight, I think Raw got the best. And you, you guys going to see how we continue. But, um, uh, all right, well, the next pick, now this pick was surprising because I wanted this guy to go to SmackDown, but he was the first pick from NXT, and his name is Finn Balor. Now, well, this is pretty obvious. Like, we was, you know, uh, when he first, in, in our last NXT podcast, um, you know, we didn't know whether he was actually going to, you know, continue to be on NXT or go to be in the draft. And we, we knew most likely he was going to be in the draft. And, yep, you know, that it happened. He was in the, uh, the draft, and he got drafted to Raw. I wanted to see him on SmackDown. I, I, just, I just really wanted to see him on SmackDown. I didn't want to see him on Raw, but, you know, he's on Raw now. So, uh... Yeah, that that was the first three picks of Raw. That was round one of the uh, picks. Now going into round two, um, <clears throat> wait, you want, you want to go Dragon or you want me, or you could go? Oh, uh, well, round two we start off with uh, John Cena. Yep, dun 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 dun. I'm glad he's on Smack. I'm glad I'm glad he's on Smack. And that's pretty. That's pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Something different, I guess. I I, I was kind of. I was kind of disappointed that, you know, Undertaker wasn't one of the options tonight. You know, because I was kind of shocked when I saw, and uh, they were doing part-timers. Yeah. Really, I was kind of shocked when they were doing some part-timers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, 
I was I was a little disappointed. Undertaker was not part of this. I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I wanted to see him on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, but uh, John Cena. Yeah, we got John Cena on SmackDown. So uh, here go. All right. So the first the first pick of the uh well in round two, um <clears throat> Roman Reigns. Now you know he's gonna he's gonna be back at Battleground this Sunday, but uh you know. I was kind of surprised. I wasn't too surprised he w he was going to be a part of the draft. I mean, he like he uh, you know, based off of how he been how he's been used in WWE. Of course, he's like one of the top guys right now. So you know, it it, it shouldn't be that big of a surprise to see Roman a part of the draft. But um, yep, he's on Raw. You know, can't really say much about him. I just know he's a part of the match this Sunday. You know, he's out because of the whole little incident that happened. But you know. We won't see no type of change in Roman. He's gonna be the same old Roman. Nothing's gonna change. I wanna see. I wanna see him turn heel, but you know. Paul Heyman. Yeah, I, I was saying that as well, Paul Heyman. But uh, you'll go. So after we got Boring Reigns, uh, we got some entertainment. The, the returning, the Viper, Randy Orton is going to SmackDown. Mm, just like 2011. Not bad. I'm true. I'm pumped about this. I'm happy about it. Randy Orton on, you know, SmackDown. I really feel like this was what SmackDown needed. Uh, I mean, what, what can I say? All I can say is SummerSlam, man. Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton. That's really much all I can say about this man. And uh, let's just hope that he has a good returning match against Brock. And um, going back to the part-time uh, uh, situation, and speaking of Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar was the next pick for Raw. Uh, now, um, I was kind of surprised because I didn't think this draft was going to have... I, th I didn't think it was going to include, like, part-timers. But, um, you know, since it included, like, Brock Lesnar, I was expecting to see possibly Undertaker. But, you know, he he wasn't a part of the draft. But um, Brock does show up more than, you know, the the, the rest of the part-timers, like The Rock, Undertaker, and um, others, uh, other legends or whatever. But, you know, Brock is the most active part-timer, so I guess he could, he could be considered a, you know... An active superstar on a, a active superstar on the roster or whatever, and he is coming back soon, so that's probably why you know, they got him on Raw. But um, I was surprised they didn't put him on SmackDown because you know he's feud with Randy Orton and he fighting him at SummerSlam. I didn't know why they, I didn't know why they put him on Raw, but it kind of doesn't matter because SummerSlam is a is a it's a it's a boat brand show, so yeah. And um, okay, well, and and there, there's no more picks for SmackDown, so the next pick for round two, the final pick for round two for Raw was the New Day. Now I was glad because they didn't split this team up. Like as a, as a team, they're really good. You know, they got their refreshment, like we mentioned in um our refreshment video. They got their refreshment. They're charismatic. They're doing good as a team, and I'm glad to still see them going. I ain't ready to see them break up yet. So you know, it's good to see them still. You know, as a as a trio. Yep, I agree, man. I I really did not want to break up the new day because you know their charisma. Their you know their their charisma is outstanding, man. So yeah, I, I truly see what you're saying there, Ishan. Yep. But, uh, after that, next we got uh, my pick, Bray Wyatt. Uh, and uh, you know that uh, that pretty much tells the story. The Wyatt family is basically over with them, sadly. Wyatt family done. You know, uh, Bray Wyatt. You know, is it is it like it's, I think it's gonna be nice to see Bray Wyatt doing his own thing again. You know, even when the Wyatt family was broken up before, and you know, before they came back, you know, Bray Wyatt was good doing his own thing. He had that little feud with Dean Ambrose for a while, so, yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, shoot, the first, we're, we're in round three, by the way. Um, the first pick for Raw in round three is Sami Zayn. Now, I mean, I, I, th I think that was a, that's actually a really good pick, because Sami Zayn is, you know, he's one of the, the rising stars, the up, the upcoming guys. Um, you know. Joke. Joke. I mean, I can't really say much about him. <laughs> I just know he's feuding with Kevin Owens right now. Like, I might as well just go ahead and spoil it because you know he's related to Sami Zayn. He's related to you know Sami Zayn's. Uh, you know, with him, he, he's a part of the feud with Sami Zayn. Kevin Owens is also yeah. on Raw as well. He also got dropped at the Raw, but um. I I'm I hope this feud doesn't continue after the draft. It might continue, but I hope it doesn't. Because I don't want it to get stale over time, like you know, um, Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin's feud or whatever, you know, because they they got a pretty good feud. I'm not gonna lie, but I don't want it to, you know, keep going 
fried. Yeah, and bro. get just get stale. That's the perfect word to describe it. Stale. I completely understand that. And yep. But uh, after you know, after his pick, Sammy, we get our first women, our, our first woman. You know, oh well, we we gotta look at that women's division. Mm -hmm. So we get Becky Lynch. Man, and she's you know she's the top dog of our show when it comes to that women division, and I'm glad to have her a part. You know, I really am glad to have Becky a part of you know the show. That's awesome, but um, <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully Becky, you know, she'll like like I said like in, in the previous video, she she'll win more matches, you know, than than lose some match. Well, she'll get more wins now. Hopefully, you know, since she's on SmackDown, because when she first came, she was taking L's like crazy. So I really, I really hope she, she, you know, she takes some W's on SmackDown. They, hell, who knows? The same thing might happen after the feud with Natalya. You know, she might take that W against Natalya at Battleground, but you know, you never know what can happen after. So, yeah, but I'm um, going back to the Raw picks. Uh, the first, well, the second woman is Sasha Banks, the boss. Now, um, <clears throat> I could picture her being, being on Raw. You know, she's, you know, she's probably gonna continue her feud with Charlotte. And I got a feeling she might actually, you know, if Charlotte was to drop the title to someone else, her and Sasha Banks may have a non-title feud. They may just feud over something else, and you know, and their friendship might get involved or something. They might think go back to the NXT days when they were a team and stuff, you know, all that good stuff. I like it. I like your thinking. I like your thinking. And um, whoops, I have I have one more pick, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. The, the fans had no reaction to Chris Jericho. <laughs> I swear when they when they said when Stephanie said uh. uh Mick Foley said Chris Jericho. The fans had no reaction whatsoever. I was like, dang. Like in the, I, I, I hold on. So not the crap That's good. That's good. Raw, but like the way that they introduced, you know, Chris Jericho being part of the draft, it was bad. Like really bad. Like this man, like Mick Foley wrote down a piece of paper. He was just like, uh, you know, he pulled, held the paper up to Stephanie, and she was just like, hmm, hmm, you got a point. You know, you got a point. Then I, I'm thinking it's gonna be something big, and it's Chris Jericho. It was kind of a letdown. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, that yeah, that reaction, that crowd reaction was just ugh. Rick Ross voice, huh? Yeah. But I'm uh, moving on to round four picks. Um, I think I'm gonna start it off this time, Dragon, because if like if we go in, if we go that way, like from starting off now, right to SmackDown, right to SmackDown, it'll end, it'll flow. It, it wouldn't end with just me having two guys, two people left. It could just be one by one by one by one. Okay. Well, uh, the first pick for uh, round four for Raw was Rusev, which I thought was a really good pick because Rusev is that man is a beast, and Ano is with. I mean, Lana is with him as well, so he gonna have some. You know, he still gonna have his wife with him, and um. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he, who is he feuding with, who, like, who is he currently feuding with right now? Oh, yeah, Zack Ryder, yeah, that's right, Zack Ryder. But, um, yeah, he's on Raw, Roos is on Raw. Mashka. Uh, my next pick, my next pick, you know, his wife is fine, he, you know, he good, he on the mic skills, and he is awesome, The Miz. The Intercontinental Champion is coming to SmackDown. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask for. Man. That's 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 your pick. I mean, all I gotta say, you know, he don't need a refreshing. He good, you know. His wife was his refreshing. <laughs> and uh, you know, shoot, <laughs> what can you say? All right, guys. Like I mentioned, not back to the raw. Not like I mentioned early on. You know, uh, Kevin Owens is on raw. He got you know he got picked for raw. Him his view his view with Sami Zayn may continue at the battleground, but who knows? It, it could it could end, but it may continue. But um. Yeah, I already explained about that earlier. Now, uh, you'll yo go. <laughs> Not much to say about Kevin Owens. So, um, my next guy, you know, he was the winner of the Andre Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania this past year. Baron Corbin coming right to us, coming right to SmackDown. I think he's going to make a big impact. I No one's, he hasn't lost a match yet. That's actually a pretty good pick in my opinion, he's, Baron Corbin. Uh, he's good. You know, he's good. So I truly feel as you know, this man is gonna come and he's gonna dominate. Um, he's gonna dominate, and eventually one day he will be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Yep. And the next pick for Raw, or the final pick for the round for round four, was uh the tag team Enzo and Big Cass. Now this was actually a really good pick. I'm glad they didn't split these guys up, cause uh you know Dragon may have a few words to say about that whole Enzo, you know, being by himself thing. You 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 could tell him if you want. 
I'm not saying that Enzo can't last. I'm just saying that I, I don't think they would know what to do with Enzo without Big Cass. They, you know, they basically they hold each other up. Well, I, I can't even say that because when Enzo wasn't here, Big Cass was doing good on his own. You know, he was he, he could speak on the mic. He was doing a great job. And so without what Enzo without Big Cass, I just don't know what could happen. You know, it's 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 one of those things of you just don't even want to figure out what could happen. So, I mean, I just hope they just stick together, stay together as long as possible. And, of course, uh, you know, when the time comes, they're going to have to break apart. But as of now, they just need to stick together, you know, enjoy Raw, and just go straight for those tag yep. titles. And, um, let's see who we have next. Okay, going moving on to round five. Now, this pick was actually surprising to me because I didn't expect, the, you know, this this trio to split up like this. But Gallows and Anderson is on Raw. While AJ Styles is left on SmackDown, now um, I think Gallows and Anderson is gonna be okay. They're really good as a you know a tag team, just them two. Um, and I really want to see them win the tag team championships. I, I think they're gonna be okay on Raw, even without AJ Styles. You know, the quite like like Gallows and Anderson, they don't need AJ. AJ might need them. That's the thing. But um, you know, Gallows and Anderson, they're good. They, I think they're good. Oh yeah. No more of that Japan stuff, I guess. But um, in the club, uh, in the club, yeah. bottles full of bub, my mama, what you need? What you need? We still getting dumb. But um, this next pick, guys, for SmackDown, it blew the roof off. The oh place. yeah, these guys are amazing. These guys, Team Angle. <laughs> <laughs> you thought, oh, yeah, you thought, you thought it was, man. yeah, you, you sitting, you watching, right? you thought it was Team Angle, didn't you? Hell no, nah, you tripping, you uh, tripping. The American Alpha, man, these NXT guys are going straight to SmackDown, and they belong there. They belong on SmackDown, and they're going to make an impact on SmackDown, because this team is, uh, they have charisma, they have what it takes to be at the top of the mountain, they have what it takes to be WWE Tag Team Champions. And we're going to see them explode. So next week on uh, SmackDown, we're going to see a good team coming out of them. And I'm not going to lie. I was glad I was glad American Alpha got drafted to SmackDown. I knew this was going to happen. Like, I, I, had it, I had it all in my mind that American Alpha was going to be on SmackDown. And it, 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 perfect. I, I was like, yes. And, and it, was, it was awesome. Because yeah, they're a really good team. <laughs> But uh, moving on to my next pick. The next pick was the Big Slow. Um, <clears throat> Big Show, my bad. Uh, well, you know, he hasn't had a match in a while. Last time he was seen, he he he, he had like a little backstage thing with, uh, you know, in that, Fourth of, that horrible 4th of July episode of Raw. He was backstage with, uh, you know, USA team. Or, I don't even want to talk about it. It was just some backstage promo stuff. But uh, when will he be back in the ring? Hopefully next week, in my opinion, because, you know, this is next week should be the it's gonna be a, a fresh new start you know with the with the after the brands being split and all brand new rosters and all but um yeah maybe he'll have a match next week. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you know Big Show back at what he does best you know just throwing people, but uh yeah. Mhm. Mm My next pick. He just got a gallon of orange juice. Refreshed. He's refreshed. You know, he was stale, know. but now he, well, he's kind of refreshed. We'll see if that refreshment is, yeah. was actually, they actually help. <laughs> yeah, this is just opportunity. This is a huge chance for this man. My next pick, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, man, he, I, like, just like his theme song, man, he here, he's here to show the world what he has. You know, I, I think that he's going to do what he does best. And like he says, show off. D show the crowd why he's there every night, you know, doing his job, being dominant. And so, yeah, Dolph Ziggler, man, all day. Dolph Ziggler. Uh, he, he, oh, what can I say? Let's just hope that this refreshment, you know, they don't screw him up. Let's just hope they do not screw this man up again. Yeah, I really I really hope Ziggler do, do better on SmackDown, man, because he was doing horrible, like, the past few weeks. Even if we were Baron Corbin wasn't all of that, man. I really hope Ziggler gets some type of push again or something, because Ziggler's a good wrestler. I like Ziggler. He's a really good wrestler, and I don't want to see him being stale, like, for a long time. Like, he was stale for a minute. I, I, he needs a refreshment. Like, he really needs some type of refreshment. I mean, he needs a new theme song. He need, he, he, he's I'll give him credit. He's changing his look. I, I know it's a little similar to HBK or whatever. But he changed. He changed his look. I'll give him that. But he need, you know, he need a 
new theme song. He just need a, a a a refreshment with his gimmick and all. That's all he needs, and he'll be he'll be good. He needs repackaging. He needs he needs to be repackaged. But um anyway, my next pick for the draft for Raw, the final pick for round five, is NXT. NXT owns when now Raw owns Nia Jax, and I was really surprised by this. Like. I, early on in the show, I was thinking, I wonder if Nia Jax is going to be a part of the draft. When they said her name, I was like, damn. And the funny thing is, when I changed my channel back to the network, uh, Nia Jax was getting interviewed with uh, what the one of the women, the female interviewers, I forgot her name, but she was interviewing Nia Jax. And it, it was just crazy seeing how Nia Jax was so big compared to that lady. Like, Nia Jax is huge. I didn't think she was that big compared to that lady. But um, not to get off topic, I hope Nia, I think Nia Jax is going to dominate. Like, they're going to utilize her great and i and vince you know he like big he like big guys he might like big big divas as well man i think like jacks is gonna dominate they're gonna turn her to a monster she gonna dominate when it, whenever she make her uh, her main roster debut you know yeah she she's gonna do great man uh, we've seen her dominance in NXT. oh yeah so i know i know we're gonna see greatness for her and she uh, she even said in one of her I, i'm gonna say like she, she, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, she cut a promo, man. She was just like, you, you can go ahead and tell Charlotte I'm coming for her, and I'm coming for that women's title. So, yeah, the women's division is great right now. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this right now. Nia Jax is gonna be the next women's champion soon. I, I, sooner or later, she's gonna she's gonna be the next women's champion. I'm gonna just say that right now. But um, yep, that was round five. Now let's move on to round six. Now the first pick for Raw for round six is the returning Neville. Now, I thought Neville was gonna go go to SmackDown, but he was, you know, he he ended up being on Raw. And Neville just returned like last week, I think. Yeah, he just returned. You know, he was injured for a few. He was out of action for a few months. But um, you know, you know, since Stephanie announced that they're bringing back the, they they starting this little cruiserweight division. I hope Neville be a part of it because he, you know, that that's gonna give him that he, he okay, he's gonna get utilized more on Raw with this cruiserweight division, you know, coming back or whatever on Raw. And um, if they bring back the cruiserweight title, I think Neville will be a good cruiserweight champion to lead the cruiserweight division, you know. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Oh, yeah. I, I truly agree with that new look, that new beard, all of that. You know, he's doing great for this. Yeah. But, uh, after that, we have, uh, one of my picks. It wasn't my personal favorite, but, uh, we, like I said, we gotta focus on that women's division. Mm -hmm. So, Natalia. Natalia is going to SmackDown. Yep. Along with Becky Lynch, and yeah, yeah, we at this point we only have two women. I think their feud is going to continue at the battleground because it just started, like you know, at the at the pre the previous pay per view. I think it might continue possibly, but uh, you know, it all depends. And um, my next pick is the uh the Swiss Superman Cesaro. Now Cesaro, he actually did an interview on uh with WWE backstage, and he wanted to go to SmackDown. He thought SmackDown was the perfect brand for him, but you know he's going to Raw, and I think he did an interview with uh, JoJo, and he was talking about uh you know how how he's now in Raw. He was like uh you know he might and I forgot what he said, but he's pretty much you know saying that no matter where he is, he's still gonna you know do what he does best and adapt to where he is. You know he, but he's on Raw. You know, I still hope Cesaro get that push pretty soon because he's a really good wrestler. Um. You know, I mean, he, this roster has a lot of. So far, you know, since we're since we're now around six, I feel like this roster has a lot of great names. And Cesaro, I think, you know, he he fits this. He really he really fits this. I I would have loved to see him on SmackDown, but they got him on Raw. So. I I agree. And I said he was gonna be on SmackDown too. And uh, guys, if you haven't noticed by now, th this is what I mean by uh, Raw pretty much got the better pitch out of the draft. Yep. But uh, after that, uh, we got Alberto Del Rio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, pretty much all I can say, a former world champion. I'm happy to have him. Um, I know he's going to make an impact, of course. Hopefully we can get him back up there in that, uh, that world heavyweight title, you know, matchup sooner or later. I can't really say much about Del Rio. I mean, you know, he's a good, you know, wrestler and all, but, you know, he gets a little boring as well. Like he get, he could get a, he could get a little stale as well. So I think he he I think he's at that point now. He's starting to get stale. But you know, 
I don't know what he, who he, who he's gonna feud with on SmackDown or how he's gonna be on SmackDown now, but we'll just have to see next week. I think a lot of refreshments might take place next week. A lot of people getting that apple juice next week. Just put it like that. That lemonade, like Beyonce would say, they're getting that lemonade next week. But anyway, uh, my, my the final pick for Raw in round six was uh, Anus uh, or Sheamus. Um, I, like throughout the show, I was thinking I was surprised he didn't get picked at an earlier point. But you know, Sheamus hasn't really been at the top like that lately. So uh, you know, he got picked in round six, um, which is not a bad pick. Cause Sheamus, a pre- he's a pretty good wrestler. Um, and yeah, not much to say about him. But um, moving on to round seven, and round seven, this was after SmackDown went off. This was actually on the network. This was during the Draft Center Live on the, the network. For Raw, the first pick was Golden Truth, R Truth, and Goldust. Man, like they're like their team. They're actually a pretty entertaining team. Like I think a lot of people may not give them credit, but I feel like they're actually a really entertaining team. They're pretty good in the ring as well. Like um, Booker T, like he, like uh. Golden True was actually talking to Booker T, you know, uh, with Renee Young and Corey Graves, and um, there was like Booker T was like he doesn't mind he, people calling R Truth the new Booker T or whatever, you know, him him taking his spot and the whole Golden Truth, you know, duo and stuff. But um, they even said it themselves; they didn't want to get split up. But you know, maybe they just wanted to be together. I honestly didn't want to see them get split up as well, because who knows what could have happened? They they would have gotten job, you know, if they got split up. A lot of these teams that didn't get split up, I'm glad because, you know. Worse, that a lot of you know that you, you might not have seen them in a while. Just put it like that, or they might not have been used well. You know, with the partner, they could they could show they could be themselves. They could you know do more things. They could you know they might they're just more comfortable in the team. Just put it like that. And these two, I see why they're more comfortable in the team because they got some chemistry and stuff. So, yeah, golden truth. Yep. Um, after that, you have the twins, the Samoan classic. The Usos are coming on to SmackDown. Uh, this might be what the Usos need. That was predictable. Uh, yeah, it really was predictable. Uh, they, were, they were talking about how they were worried backstage where they were going. Trust me, they were not worried. I, I'm pretty sure as well. Hell no, nah, man. Uh, First off, they're not going to split the Usos up. What the hell are they going to do with the Usos if they, if they split up? Like, literally. What are they going to do with the Usos when they split up? I don't know about that. They're going to be in the most random matches ever. Usos, man. The Usos were the pick for a uh, pick for that. They were that pick. I mean, to me, the Usos they need orange juice as well. This could be the perfect opportunity for that orange juice. Yep, they need that refreshment. Uh, I mean, I mean and they 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 need help. So this could be the the opportunity they've been looking for, and I think they're gonna use it wisely. Yep. And uh, the next pick, we uh, I haven't really been hearing much about this uh, this diva, what well, this women wrestler, Paige, uh, one of my favorites actually. Paige is, you know, she's still on Raw, which is, you know, she she's she's picked for Raw, which is pretty good, I guess. So hopefully, she'll get her spot at the, you know, the women's championship in the future. Um, can't really say much about Paige. I feel like Paige, she's a, she's a little still like they don't really do much for Paige like they used to. Maybe she'd be on main event the superstars, but I feel like Paige, she had her time, but maybe you know. Maybe she's starting to fall. Maybe she's starting to descend a little bit in her career. Maybe you know she needs some. I think she needs a refreshment too. She needs she needs a refreshment as well. And your turn. Good old fashioned H two O. But uh, but um, uh, up next we have a man that you know has made history many times before. He, you know, uh, of course he he has an identity crisis once in a while. Uh, the Demon King. We have the Demon King coming to SmackDown, spewing out fire everywhere. So I mean, I, this man really doesn't even need an introduction. You know, he he's good, and I cannot wait to have him on the roster and you know doing his thing. I'm so glad. Like, okay, when I was talking to uh. Eva can gauge during the dra- the draft. He said something like, "What if they have Cobra Kane go to Raw and have Demon King go to SmackDown or the other way around?" That's that man. If they did some shit like that, I would have been so done. But you know, it kind of doesn't make sense because Cobra Kane is not a well. He he was a wrestler, but it, it just you know it just wouldn't make any sense to have Cobra Kane wrestle again and then Demon Kane on SmackDown. That would be just stupid. But if they did that. That would have been the dumbest idea ever. 
So I'm glad they got Kane. And I'm not finna call this nigga Demon Kane. Just call a nigga Kane. I don't know why they call this man Demon Kane. What happened to the Big Red Monster? What happened to the Big Red Machine? Demon Kane? Come on now. <laughs> it's not a bad name. It could be a part of his na his nickname. But like I'm looking on the, on the I'm looking on WWE.com right now. They they don't even have Kane. They literally put Demon Kane. Like that's like his, I think I hope that's not his new name, Demon Kane. Like they literally have Demon Kane, and that's ridiculous. But you know, this despite it, despite, I mean, despite the name change, you know, I, well, I don't want to say a, a complete name change, but despite that, um, I hope they you know use Kane right on SmackDown. I don't know you know what, what's going to be next for Kane because Kane, that man, been with the company for a long ass time, so I don't know what's next for Kane. And now moving on to round eight. Um, this is still during the uh, draft center live on the network. The first pick for Raw was Darren Young with Bob Backlund. Now, well, he's getting his title shot against the Miz. That's right. Wow, he's getting his title shot against the Miz. Not yeah, against the Miz at Battleground. Now you know you never know. He, he might take that title to Raw. He might end up taking that championship to Raw. Him and Bob Backlund, you know, they're gonna be celebrating with the title and all. But you know, we'll just see. Like this is Darren Young's like only big push as a singles competitor. This this is probably his first big push as a singles competitor going after the mid card title. So I'm hoping to see something, you know, go down Sunday. I'm hoping to see Darren Young hopefully win, maybe. So yeah. And your turn. Uh so this man really is who's that jumping out the sky? I'm just uh, my, uh, you know, Kalisto. Uh, Kalisto, uh, man, all I can say is, man, we need a luchador, and Kalisto is the man for SmackDown, so we got Kalisto. I mean, I I'm happy about this. Well, that's pretty awesome. Well, uh, speaking of the Lucha Dragons, uh, Sin Cara was drafted the Raw. Now, the Lucha Dragons are officially split. I kind of knew this was going to happen. Like, there were already videos going up saying Sin Cara and Kalisto was going to split up. Now, the reason why they're doing this is because they need one luchador on SmackDown. They need one luchador on Raw. Like, they need, you know, each, both rosters need, you know, a luchador. And I think that's what they, they that, I think that's why they split them up, so. Yep. Might not see much from Sin Cara on Raw. I don't know, what, like, what we going to see from him as a singles competitor. But, um, hopefully he'll be util utilized well in that cruiserweight thing, that cruiserweight division on Raw. No offense to Sin Cara, but I really do think they're gonna focus more on you know Kalisto than Sin Cara, you know, than Sin Cara. Most like mostly because when you look at Kalisto, you know he's more of an athlete. You know, like how like I said, you know he's almost like Rey Mysterio who never left. You know what I mean? The size, the charisma, you know all of that. You, you see, you know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, yeah. And um, the final pick. Yep, the final pick for Raw for the for round eight was Jack Swagger. Now um, I can't really say much about Jack Swagger at this point, man. I don't know what the hell they doing with Jack Swagger. He he, that man been still for a long ass time. Like I've mentioned previously, he you know he had his big push like three years ago. Smoked some weed and he just went downhill from there. Like I I I don't know I don't I don't know what to say about Jack Swagger at this point I don't know what's what's going on. He kind of been at the bottom for a while, but um, but we'll see how he's gonna do in Raw. I think he might have I think he could have he could have done better on SmackDown instead, but we'll just see how he'll do in the Raw. Did it, did it start with you after this next round? You said what? Did, 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 uh, did it all start with you after this next round or what? Oh, no, no. I'm already, I'm, I'm already yeah. in the next round. You know, round eight, you know. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. We're that's still right. in round eight. All right. So, all right my, that's my that's all right. Our next pick is Naomi. Uh, Naomi, we need, like I said, the, that women division is growing, and we need it its best. And Naomi is, like... I would literally go as far as saying Naomi is the most athletic, you know, woman in the, like, you know, when it comes to the women division, she's the most athletic out of the whole division. So, yeah, we got Naomi. 
Now, I, I really want to see more from Naomi. I like how she was. I, li I like how they turned her heel because she showed she she did more as a heel. Like she's a really badass heel. I like that. And she's coming back. Uh, she's coming back probably next week because she got this thing called the glow going on. She got this new look. Her hair glowing. Her lip gloss glowing. All of that. She got her own little thing going on. Her own little thing going on, which is not bad. But uh, hopefully we'll see her back next week. But um, yeah, and hopefully she'll be women's champion in the future because I'm gonna mind seeing Naomi as champion. She's pretty good in the ring. And uh, yeah. And the final pick. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, you'll go. My bad. I already said Jack Swagger, and Kyra. Dunn. Yeah, it's your go. I think I kind of messed it up a little bit. But Dragon has one more pick for SmackDown in the round eight. The Ascension. I mean the Ascension. Yep, I call them the Ascension because they they have they have descended over the since they left NXT. They have they literally descended. They went downhill. <laughs> of course, you know, of course, you, we needed more tag team. But of course, these guys at one point was the best NXT tag team of all time. They dominated longest reigning NXT tag, you know, team champions of all time, and now we have, the, you know, this. But hopefully, like I said, for all these people that are stale or just dry as a desert, this is their chance to get some orange juice. This to get some, yeah, it's, they desert so dry. They desert is so dry. They need some rain. They need some rain. Yeah, this is their chance to make it rain up in that. Uh, you know, uh, cocktail this, if it's making rain in that, but you know, yeah. They need and this is what they need, so you know. That, I guess that's the only time Roman Reigns was actually useful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Ascension is a really good tag team. Like in NXT, they were like they dominated. They they defeated Corey Graves and uh, I think Neville. Yeah, when they were a tag team, and they were like undefeated for a long ass time, and they were tag team champions. Now I hate to see it. I I they, they dropped the, okay they uh, WWE dropped the ball with this team like really really bad. They could have been dominant on the main roster. Um, they need a refreshment on SmackDown. I hope on SmackDown they do much better. A little better, I hope. You know, they ain't got to be undefeated, you know, but they could win some matches at least. But uh, as far as Superstars and Main Event, I don't know if they've been competing or not because like I mentioned early on, I don't really watch Main Event and Superstars. So, yeah. But um, moving on to Round 9 picks. The first pick for Raw was the Dudley Boys. And like like Dragon said, man, Raw got that roster, man. They got the Dudley Boys. The Dudley Boys, they ain't really been, you know, doing as much. They they've been they've been you know, they've been doing some matches, but I feel like they're they're doing what R V D did. They're just uh putting guys over. Putting teams over at this point. 'Cause they're they've pretty much accomplished a lot. They I I think at this point they're just putting teams over. But ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. Make the new guy look good. Like R V D did did with Neville. He you know, Neville beat him, you know. But I would like to see these guys become champions again. Hopefully in the future. So, uh, and if you want to talk about a refreshment after, after. with these guys, that, that's kind of I I don't, I don't really see that ca like happening because you know they they've been like this for a long time. They're 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 pretty much legends. You know, legends can't really get refreshed too much, but anything can happen. You never know. They might do that. They might get refreshed. You never know. And I I yeah I can't agree. They are kind of getting to that stale point. You have missed stale for a while. But uh, after the awesome Dudleys, uh, you know, after we get, we're gonna leave Dudleyville for a second, go right, you know, drive right past Suplex City Center, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, you know, woo, woo, woo. She blowed it. Right. She blowed it. <laughs> I mean, you know it. Yes, we got, got Zack Ryder, the new refreshed Zack Ryder. That I believe that's gonna take the title from Rusev this Sunday. Well, it, it's a need. He needs this win. He needs it. I mean, it's not like he needs his win. Not a what, uh, you know what? Yeah, you know, it's not a what if. He needs. This yeah. Win. So uh, let's pray to God that he takes it, and uh, you know, bring it on home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope Zach win uh, at, at Battleground. So I want, I want to see, I want to see the unexpected happen at Battleground. I really hope Zach Ryder uh, wins. Now, if they let Zach lose again and, and they somehow have a match again at SummerSlam, SummerSlam would be the perfect place for Zach to win at if he loses at Battleground. But um, yep. yep. Uh, okay, the next, you know, the next pick for Roth in Round Nine. It wasn't nothing too made. It was just Summer Race. The next Diva, um. Wasn't too excited that much about it, you know. Summer, you know, she sometimes she be, you know, sometimes she appears, sometimes she don't. She probably be on superstars and main event. Yeah. 
And uh, she also does movies and stuff like the Marines. Yeah. Like that, making those type movies. With but ain't, ain't much to say about Summer Rae. Like, the last time she actually had, like, a refreshment or whatever was when she was, you know, with Rusev and Lana was with uh, Ziggler. Yeah. That was the last time she had some type of role, but now she's just she's just there. I guess she has matches sometimes. Sometimes she has matches, sometimes she don't, but it's whatever. We'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> so, SmackDown. It, it, it's so great because I feel like this man is going to be the first. He, it, it, it's, he's going to do something that no one has ever done before. And even though a man named Bobby Lashley should have did this a long time ago, we got Apollo. Oh, we got Apollo uh, no, Cruz and Apollo Cruz. Apollo, I really, I think that you know this man could be the first African American WWE champion, like WWE World Heavyweight Champion. We've seen Booker T World Heavyweight Champion. We've seen tag, Kobe Kingston tag team. We've seen Kobe Kingston Intercontinental, and we've seen Kobe Kingston uh, U.S. But we have never, ever seen an African American. And y'all niggas better not comment. The Rock counted. The Rock he considers his, he, he oh, considers yeah, himself yeah, yeah. Samoan. He consider he, he like I, I don't think he considers him. He considers himself black. He considers himself Samoan. So I mean, at the end of the day, The Rock is half black. You know, either, either way, but. He does count as he technically kind of does count as the first black champion, but we never had like a fully, one hundred percent you know black champion, African American champion. I'm, like I'm not talking about Samoan. Like I'm not talking about because like he, Rock, he mostly takes after you know. Come on, heritage, Samoan yeah. Blood. Yeah. So because I'm talking about full out African. Yeah, full out African American. Yeah, fully black. <laughs> Basically, we never had that champion yeah. yet. So I, I really feel as Apollo, you know, he has the ability to do this. Yep. And I feel like he's going to do this. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's that that's that pick. Mm -hmm. Um, like Apollo Cruz, he I, I like Apollo Cruz. I want to see more from him. I hope that they utilize him right, and I want to see more of him. I feel like we haven't seen his full his full potential yet, especially on the mic or whatever. Like in the ring, he's really good, but you know, like I said, I, I don't like how I mean. I understand, you know, he's a face or whatever, but I wonder how he's going to be as a heel because he smiles a lot as a face. We see that he's a happy guy or whatever, but I think that moment, may, may, I, I, don't, I don't know, I think maybe that moment he turned a heel, we might see a whole different Apollo Crews. And, like, uh, something was mentioned during this draft. Uh, Corey Graves had mentioned something. He was just like, now, Apollo, he's an awesome fighter. You know, he doesn't talk, you know, you know, he doesn't talk. You know, physically, you know, he eats, or he talks, you know, in the yeah. ring. That's what he does. He doesn't, he doesn't do his talking by microphone. He does his talking inside that ring. So, and you know, Corey Graves had a point on something. Maybe the reason why Apollo hasn't stood out that well, like he should, yeah. it might just, it might just be because there was so much going on. Think about it: the Shane McMahon jump on the Undertaker that he missed. It was right after WrestleMania. Think about all the stuff that was going on. Oh yeah. After WrestleMania, and then you know Apollo kind of got buried under that stuff. Kind of like Triple H says, you know, you get, you know, he he'll bury you. And I really do feel like that's what happened with Apollo. I feel like Apollo got buried, you know, under all that WrestleMania hype. He got buried under all that. But now I mean, this like this brand split is. Like, you know, like Dan Bryan and Shane McMahon said, and I hope they're, you know, going about their word, and I'm hoping to see this change on SmackDown. They're going to give, like, new superstars, you know, a chance. And, you know, I, this, he's one of those guys I want to see get that chance, you know. Yep. And um, the next, the final pick for round round nine, number nine picks for, uh, for Raw is Mark Henry. Now, we haven't seen this guy in a while. I don't know when he's retiring. Like, I heard he's retiring pretty soon. I don't know if he's retiring this year or next year, but he's retiring pretty soon. But maybe he's going to have his final run, so that's probably why he's not back yet. I think he's recovering from an injury because I, th I think he was injured last time I, you know, checked, you know, on any on any updates involving Mark Henry. But hopefully we'll see him back soon. And, yep. You, you started off the next. You, you started off the next, right? Or was it? Smackdown. Oh yeah, yeah, your turn. You got, you got the last one. You got one more on SmackDown. We still on round nine. All right, all right. 
kind of switched up a little bit because it's like three. It's like three on yours and three on mine. It was supposed to be three on mine and two for you, but it switched up. You know. Yes. So uh, we, uh, you know, that like I said, that women's division. We got somebody from NXT, Alexa Bliss. Man, I mean, uh, where, where she came from, like right, Blake and Murphy. Right? Mm, yep, she came from Blake and Murphy. She left them actually. <laughs> Yeah, she left. Yeah, she left them, and uh, I, I was kind of. I was a little shocked too. You know, she was, she was in the draft, and then also, but Blake and Murphy weren't. You know, they were not in the draft. But uh, I mean, hey, that that that, that doesn't matter. I mean, the, the point is the women's division is just getting. Um, it, 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 it's, it's yeah, it is pretty good now. And, and uh, I mean, I, it can only get better from here. So, I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the women's, you know, roster doing its best at what it does and shocking the world with their matches. Yep. And um, you know, <clears throat> Alexa Bliss, she's a she's pretty good in the ring. Now, um, I didn't I didn't know she I didn't I had no clue or no idea whatsoever that she was going to be in the draft. I didn't think about it at all. But um, you know, maybe you know. The main roster, I guess they're just adding more divas that they think are ready. Maybe she, they thought, you know, she was ready, I guess. She seemed like she's ready. She's pretty good, you know, doing promos or whatever, and she's good in the ring. So, you know, I guess she has that potential. But um, moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Moving on to round 10, we have the first pick for Raw is Brian Strowman. So, which means he's officially no longer, you know, with the Wyatt family. And I think he's going to do good on his own. He's going he to be all right on his own. I mean, he, I feel like. I mean, throughout the whole Wyatt family, he was the strength. He was the he he was the power of the Wyatt family, and, and he could use that power on his own. I feel like he can do matches by himself. I just hope I I really hope they don't pull off no great Kali bullshit and make Brian Strowman dancing around, acting all crazy. Keep him like he is now. Make him keep him dominant and stuff. You know, like, kind of like how the great Kali went from. Beating the Undertaker. I could to, picture him having like a few entertaining know, moments with a few entertaining people or wrestlers, but don't completely change him up. Make it. Fun yeah, don't, don't, don't yeah. Fun. Your turn. But uh, after you know, after him, uh, I was just making sure you got the word. I'm good. But uh, after after him, we have um, Breeze on go. This tag team is, I mean, they don't need a refreshment. They are the refreshment. They, they just got, you know, this new tag team not too long ago. They're doing great right now. Um, I only expect the best. I really do feel like these are also some of the guys you can say that they are going to be future WWE tag team champions. Yeah, I, I can I picture them being tag team champions. I wouldn't mind seeing that. And they both got refreshed. They're they're pretty good. Like I uh, back then, before they even became a team, I always you know wondered if these two are actually gonna meet in a ring one day and team up. And I was surprised it actually happened because they they're like the perfect match. So. Yep. Uh, and my next pick is uh the next pick for Raw was Bo Dallas. Now Bo Dallas is you know leaving the Social Outcast officially now that um he's on Raw. Now um. I don't know what they're gonna do with Bo Dallas now. To be honest, I I I, I don't really uh, know. Like, see, I, I I don't know if the social outcast is over because uh, is it cool? I make a spoil off you right quick. Is it cool? Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, Jack, and uh, fix your mic. Can you hear me? Hold on, I, I, I'm I'm gonna call you back because your voice is lagging. But um, is it cool that I make a spoiler off you? I don't care. All right, but um. I don't know if the social outcasts are over, and the only reason why is because Curtis Axel also got drafted over to the Raw, so they could be. A yeah, you're right. I just thought about that. Yep. But yeah, and we like also we well, well we'll mention it at the very end what happened with Heath Slater, but still we we like you know anything can happen, anything can happen with this draft, you know this brand split. So I mean, yeah. I expect the best. Yep. Um, like Dragon said, you know, I, 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 I mean, to be honest, I had no thought on Bo Dallas whatsoever and what was going to be next. But you know, he said he he said um, Curtis Axel and then and Bo Dallas on the same roster, so they should they might continue as a two man team. 
But um, your turn. Whoa. <laughs> 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 oh hell no! Oh, oh. <clears throat> oh hell no! Uh, but, uh, this, this next pick was kind of a disappointment, and uh, I just—I I said I—I I, I couldn't Eva believe what Marie. I saw. Wait, wait, say it again. Eva yep, Marie. Eva Marie. Yeah. Eva freaking Marie. I—I I mean, she had a match at WrestleMania. She was in, in like this was me and Ace. This is what we thought because. And knowing that she had a match at WrestleMania, like I was like, I was, like, like she went to NXT right after X, like uh, WrestleMania. She went back to NXT, and they said six NXT superstars are going to be picked. And apparently, she was number six, which she wasn't. She was just having matches for NXT. It got a lot. It was a lot of confusion. We didn't understand. Mm -hmm. It was dumb. But I mean, like I said, the women's division is growing. This was kind of a shock. It was kind of a waste of a pick, to be honest. Uh, well, no, no. It was not a waste of a pick. As long as she does her job and entertain and, you know, makes the women's division better, mm -hmm. she's good in my book. And I think that she's going to make a great impact. Oh, and, you know, as far as the entertaining part, you could, you could, you could check that right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she can she can, she can stir up some trouble. She can do, make some. Yep. And what, what I mean by entertaining, you know, maybe we might see some botches, you know, <laughs> some mess, some mistakes in the rank. Yeah, we, we, yeah that's, that's, you know, we might see something out of that, you know, hopefully. But uh, yeah, uh, man, man, she got better. Got I ain't gonna lie, she, I, I, I'll admit, compared to what she was a few years back, she was horrible. But she she's she's better. Oh, yeah, she did get better. I ain't gonna lie, she got way better. If you guys want to see that uh, see that footage, uh. Search uh, the WrestleMania before Raw. That wrestle that what when she ran out, that was a huge bust when she was running. I don't know what she. I, I think she had something in her. She's trying to run like John Cena or something. She tried to run it like John Cena, and also for more proof, if you want to learn more about her, uh, just watch Total Divas. See yep, that, that's that's pretty much where she got she got famous off of Total Divas, man, and they put on television, you know, uh, as a wrestler, and ta da. Uh, so. I mean, I like I said, I'm not gonna put her down. Yeah. I'm gonna give her a chance because sh this new SmackDown, SmackDown is about opportunity, yep. and so I'm gonna you give her the opportunity. I agree with Dragon. To show the world that you know she, you know she has what it takes to be the women's champion. She has what it takes to be at the top of the mountain. So yeah, she she's good in my book. All right, well, uh, moving on to my final pick on the Raw. Uh, the Shining Stars. Now we haven't seen these guys on, you know, SmackDown or Raw for a while, but I got a feeling in my gut they might have been on Superstars or main event. Now I've seen these team. I've seen them team up in person, and they actually had a pretty good match. And um, like as a group, like they're actually really entertaining. They're as a heel. Like I feel like at live events, they they do more than what they do on television. Like at live events. Man, they they say much more. They don't they don't do nothing like you know TV fourteen ish. They still be PG, but they say more things and do more in live events than they do uh you know on the main roster. Well, on television like live or whatever. But I really hope to see more from uh the shining stars on Raw, and I think we will. I think we will. I mean, I I haven't really seen them do much. I saw them in like two matches so far. So yeah, I think they're gonna be good. So this just like I said, hope for the best. Cause this is a new era called, you know. I, I like to call this new era, like I said, opportunity. You know, so give them an opportunity, and just see what they got. So uh, my the next pick I have is uh, the Vod villains. Like I've like I've said before, um, <clears throat> this team is pretty good in the ring, but like I said, their gimmick is just boring to me. It's just so boy, uh, man. But I think they're gonna do really good on SmackDown. Like legit, they might be at that type of team to piss the fans off, and they might you know make it to the top of SmackDown or something. You know, as a ta as a tag team, possibly. You know. Like okay, this is how I feel about their gimmick. I think they they, they are good. No, don't get me wrong, they are good. Like Ace said, they're very athletic. They got what it takes to be at the top. We promo. Before they almost made it to the top, they almost made it to the top, but. The problem is they need to speed it up a little bit. They really need to speed it up a little bit. I, I, the black and white thing, it's kind, it's cool, I guess, but uh, we we've seen it before. Have you ever seen the NWO? We've seen it before. It, it, it's not it's not 
anything special. It doesn't make them special. They need something different. They need to speed it up a little bit. I'm not saying keep that. Yeah, keep that little old timey thing you're doing with the flexing and stuff like. Keep that, but speed it up a little bit because it, 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 it's it's a new era. It's fast paced. Things are going back and forth, back and forth. We didn't expect to see Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar, but we're getting it. It, it was made like that, fast paced, because they know what the people want. Make the VOD villains, like you like to say, make Darren Young straight. Make the VOD villains great again. Do, 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 and I'm not saying that they're bad. Like I said, they are good, but they need to speed up the pace. They need it, well, desperately. They need to speed up the pace, or they're going to get lost in this bullcrap. I'm just going, I'm not even going to share it. They're going to get lost. I feel like. And uh, that's what the Vaude villains I feel like the Vaude villains, they have potential. Like, I don't want to put them down or whatever. I feel like they have potential. They just need they just need some more work done to them. And I think they'll be good. They just need some more work done to them. I think, I, I could picture them being, like, really entertaining. Like, I, I low-key could picture them being, like, a, a really entertaining tag team. But. Exactly. And that's where speeding up comes in. That's what I'm saying. They need to speed and, up. And, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I, we'll just see what they'll how they'll be on SmackDown. And, uh, okay, that was it for round 10. And now we're on the final round, guys. Round 11. Um, <clears throat> the first pick for Raw is the returning Alicia Fox. She returned on main event like last week. I didn't see it, but I read it online. She returned on, uh, you know, um, main event. Now, she only had that one push when, um, when she was getting pushed, when she had this mad black woman gimmick, which is very uh, African-American stereotypical-like or whatever you want to say. Very Just, yeah, very... And I wish she could have, you know, she was, she is the first African American Divas champion. I wish she could have, um, I wish they could have done more with her, especially in this era right now. They can do much more with her, and uh, you know, I feel like with that gimmick, that mad black woman gimmick, she could have done much more. She could have been one hell of a champion with that kind of gimmick. She could have, she could have led her group. She could have been the the me, the messy chick or some shit with a whole, with, you know, with people with chicks backing her up or whatever. But um. I don't know what's next for Alicia Fox at this point. Well, uh, my opinion on her is uh, she's she's won the women's title before. Well, before it was called a Divas title, she's won it before. Well, she no, she was Divas champion. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's uh, you know, she's won the Divas title before, and uh, you know, in this, like I said, new era. So how is she going to fit into the new era? It's going to be difficult, but I think they're going to make it work for her. And I think they're going to do a great job, you know, putting her in this new era. So, yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like I kind of uh, feel like she should have been to SmackDown. Like I kind of I kind of wanted to see her on SmackDown. I feel like she could have. She might she might get used better on SmackDown than Raw. I don't know why. That, that's just my gut. I feel like she might have gotten. She might have. She might get used better on SmackDown than Raw. Yeah, while I'm on this subject, before I move on to my next pick. One thing I noticed in this, she's supposed to be returning soon. Nikki Bella was not really. What, 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 okay, now she's returning. I think they're trying to hold her return, you know, because she had to get a CAT scan. Like, you know, they they got to scan, you know, her injury to make. They got to scan her and make sure she's like, you know, able to compete again and healthy enough. She's gonna be back soon. I, I guess she didn't get her doctor, her doctor approval yet or something like that. But I don't know when we gonna get news about that. I'm, but I mean. If, she does come back where she uh, I don't even know. I can picture her on yeah, Raw. I mean, when you Yeah, but when you think about it, Raw Yeah, Raw is actually right SmackDown Raw could use an extra diva, I guess. You could go to SmackDown, I guess. Yeah. Raw is truly stacked. You got Charlotte, Sasha. Just, just, man, Raw is truly stacked. And Brock Raw, Lesnar, you know, uh, uh, Seth Rollins. Brock freaking Lesnar. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like this. I feel like SmackDown should have got Undertaker. Like I mentioned, I feel like SmackDown should have had a part timer too. Like Raw got Brock Lesnar and SmackDown got Undertaker. I, I think that would have been perfect. I think I think that I think that would have made them like even. I, it, 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 that might have made them even, in my opinion. Like, and I, I had to think before, and I, I had told this to Ace on it. It, it kind of knocked Ace on back into reality too, because I had a lot of hype on Samoan Joe when this thing started. And then it hit me. This man is an NXT champion. I knew he was going to debut. Like I remember when you were saying that um, you know, it's a uh, you know Samoa Joe might debut. I was like, yeah, he might. But I was thinking to myself, that that kind of don't make sense because he's a champion. He's not going to debut just yet. He dominated on NXT right now. But whenever he, when whenever he hits the main roster, I hope to see him. I really hope to see him on SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah, I think I feel like the SmackDown is where he belongs, in my opinion. 
Yeah, moving on. My next pick. Uh, he's been, you know, he's been by himself before. I told you, I, I said this in one video, I forgot. But whenever I think of this man, I think of a blank page. I used to call him the new Kane back then. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to call him the new Kane. I don't know. Why. Yeah, yeah, this man, I don't know. See, knowing that Bray Wyatt is going to be on SmackDown, the guy, he, you know, is Eric Rowan, by the way. But knowing Bray Wyatt is going to be on SmackDown, I don't know if he's going to stick with Bray Wyatt or he's going to do his own thing or what. Hey, hey, hey you know, Brian Strowman on Raw, too. He could still team up with, uh, you know. Well, no, 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 I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Eric, you said SmackDown. I'm thinking about Raw. My bad. <laughs> my bad. Eric, uh, yeah. Eric, Eric he can still, he can still, uh, Smackdown. Wyatt's on SmackDown, right? Yeah, he can still, you know, yeah. be with Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. And if Luke Harper returned, he could team up with so, Brian Strowman. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that just, if Luke Harper, you know, comes, I really think Luke Harper. Now, if Luke Harper don't go to Raw, if he go to SmackDown, he might end up, you know, they might bring back the old Wyatt family and keep Brian Strowman by himself or something, but, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you but I think it'll make sense to put him on Raw since, you know, he could he could team up with Brian Strowman. They could have, like, a, a giant tag team or whatever, big guys. Some Vince would like. <clears throat> Not that I care about it. I'm just saying I know that's something Vince would like because he like, he like the big guys or whatever. But, um, <clears throat> sorry about that noise. Was... Hold, hold on a second, guys. Hold on. Hello? But, uh, right. yeah, guys. <laughs> Knowing that Raw has to take a little quick break right quick with uh, some situations. Uh, man, I'll, I'll, you know what? <clears throat> what the heck? Welcome to the Dragon's Den. And so, I mean, pretty much the only thing since I, I'm, you know, since I'm the host and I'm also my guest, I'm I, Dragon. I got one question to ask you. <clears throat> uh, okay, got. I'm just gonna go ahead and say. I'm back. Say it. He sl he Slater, uh, I, I'm gonna, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and say he Slater. He didn't even get drafted. This man, how that, how embarrassing is it knowing that Curtis actually gets drafted to Raw. Bo Dallas gets drafted to Raw. He Slater goes nowhere because he doesn't even get drafted. And like they had it all set up. So, hey, so, you remember we laughed. Like like before before they, they showed he Slater on TV. Like before they showed him on um. <clears throat> On the uh, the network, I was like, he Slater didn't even get drafted. Like we was talking about Bo Dallas and um, Curtis Axel. Then it sure he he Slater like right after the show, he was like, what about me? What what, what, what Bo Dallas is gone? Curtis Axel is gone. And he he was just sitting there. And, and, and they literally turned the lights off. Yeah, they just turned the lights off. They just shut the lights, they the lights off. And he just sat there. I'm like, dang, that man. That's bad. And like so. What, who I think he might. Him? I think he might be just entertaining. See, I think he's just, you know, he he's he, he's just there for the entertaining part of the, you know, the show and stuff. But uh, yeah, if it all came down to, it, I would have no problem with him coming over yeah. to SmackDown. I mean, shoot, what the heck? him coming over to SmackDown, it wouldn't be no problem for me, no big deal. So I mean, yeah. So, but uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, who was I on? Oh yeah, yeah, Dana Brooke. She's the next one. She's the uh the second one in uh the Raw pick of round eleven. Um um. <clears throat> Dana Brooke, she's a new diva. You know, hopefully we'll see more out of her. You know, she's, you know, muscular or whatever. She's like the – she she kind of reminds me of Beth Phoenix a little bit. You know, she's just helping out Charlotte. Yeah. But uh, we'll see more of Dana Brooke. I think she might – you know, I want to see her fight Nia, Nia Jax. I think that might be a good match. I agree. That's all. Ooh, next, 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 next. I'm getting hype. I'm getting hype because this next man is a man of the hype. He's part one half of the hype bros, also other half Zack Ryder, Mojo Riley, man, this man. I mean, what what can I say? He he, he can he can make an impact. I think he's gonna like with this guy. I think he's gonna dominate that mid title, like you know that uh that not the uh, those minor titles. I think like the, the Intercontinental Championship, or uh, you know he, he, if uh Zach, if this whole Russo versus Zack thing, if this doesn't work out, then. Man, hey, you know, they could go for the tag yep. team titles. You know, so Mojo, you know, either minor or I just don't see this man being up there at the top of the spot. Which I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not saying I'm not saying that this man can't be at the top of the mountain. I just don't see his career going in that direction. I see his career going to like the intercontinental or the you know, US or they could just change yeah. the gimmick all together. Refresh give him, like for packaging you know, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I 
I can only hope for the best <laughs> of Mojo. He's good in the like I said, good in the ring. Shoot. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. And um, well, the final pick for Raw, the final pick for Raw in this, this the whole you know draft or whatever it was, Curtis Axel. Now um, you know, like we mentioned, you know, early on, you know, he's not with Heath Slater and Bo Dallas no more. He's on his own now. Uh, you know, didn't we, didn't we say uh, wait, Bo Dallas? He's on he's on Raw, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we we, could see, we we still might see. Yo, we still might see Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel possibly like team up, and they may they may still have the social outcasts as two people. So, but if they if they put Curtis Axel on his own, man, yeah, they better on. like you know use him right this time. Like I'm talking about the 2013 Curtis Axel, not that not this pan homage to John Cena with the shorts or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, yo, and this is where I come in. Fix this man. Fix him. Go back to the better than perfect. Stop with the, just jiving this man with this social upcast bullcrap. W, I swear, I will send letters until you fix Curtis Axel. Get this man back to IC title. <laughs> fix him. I swear, if y'all do not fix, I, I won't go 2K on y'all, man, because I, I ain't playing no more. Fix him. Man, if Triple H can get up and fix his kids' breakfast, fix his supper sandwich, and yeah, fix up Stephanie and give her babies, Man, shoot! You can fix this crap. I swear, fix it. And I want mom fix. I want mom fixing up stuff. Actually, you know, she should be a milf. But um, uh, oh, oh go ahead. You had, you had a, I think you have one more pick left. Well, yeah, yeah, you have one more. Yeah. And the last pick <coughs> of the night, and it was also a very yeah. I was surprised. This woman, she, this woman, is she fine. fine as hell. She is and she dates. I heard she dates Colin Cassidy as well. Big Cass, aka Big Cass. He's outspoken. Yep. Carmella, man, she. And she's pretty. She's pretty good in the ring. I, I love her finisher. She does this leg submission. Like she, she wrap her legs around your neck and just choke you and stretch you back. It's a pretty awesome finisher. Yeah, like I said, you know, it's it's looking good for uh, you know the women's division. I like one person I, I was hoping to see tonight was Bailey. You know, yeah, I knew Bailey wasn't gonna be the. Sh I like I heard she wasn't ready for the main roster yet. I was happy to see. I was happy out of this whole entire draft. I think mostly, like, I was happy to see that Finn Balor decided to grow out of NXT and come on to the yeah. roster. I was really happy to see that. But uh, so I mean, I mean, Raw SmackDown, this you know the split that yep. didn't made. What do you think? What is your rating on this? Mm, I give it an eight out of ten. Yep, uh, same here. I will give it an eight out of ten of this whole night. It was great, uh, great show. <laughs> it was very entertaining. And uh, that's about it, guys. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe. So, uh, can I get the bada bing, bada boom. Who are the finest guys in the room? Me and Ace on, so Ace on, how you doing?